When it comes to truly learning and retaining information, sorting into categories, understanding relationships, and seeing the associations between seemingly um, random pieces of vocabulary can truly help a student. With that, I would like to explain the number system to you in terms of nesting cups. These are items that you might find in your kitchen. I'm always looking for ways to explain things to a person, uh, particularly parents who are trying to help their children with the, with the um, manipulatives that you have right in your kitchen or in your home. If you have younger children, perhaps you have nesting cups or um, nesting blocks. Those are the, the toys of, of a preschooler. But your, your measuring cups really um, are a fine manipulative for sorting. So let's see if I can help you make some sense out of these number system categories. The, the number system itself branches into two categories. We've got real numbers and imaginary numbers. That would be our largest category. The imaginary number just dead ends right here. Uh, it is a, uh, an upper mass uh, concept where actually mathematicians ran into some problem and with the rules and had to make up a number and give it a value. I'll explain that in a moment. The real numbers then branch out into two positions too. Our next size cup would be rational numbers and irrational numbers. The irrational number then dead end trails, but the rational, the rational numbers continue on into what's called integers. The integers branch into whole numbers. And finally, the whole numbers branch into the natural numbers. So the, the whole number system is made up of the large category, real imaginary, the rational and irrational integers, whole numbers, and finally, the natural numbers. Let me take them from uh, the lowest amount of numbers, the fewest, to the whole entire system, and let me see if I can help you understand what is entailed in each one of them. Our natural numbers are numbers that are one, two, three, to infinity, these would be numbers that we probably teach our preschooler when, when a child is first starting to count. Whole numbers, the next category bump up, also includes the zero, one, two, and three. You can see that the original category is then included in the second larger category, but we've added something to it which of course makes that a larger category. The integers keep the zero and the one, two, three, and so forth to infinity. These go on and on forever. But we're adding to this category our negative numbers. So negative one is in there, negative two, and so forth to infinity in the negative direction. So these cups then would fit into another uh, slightly larger. In the next category, we've got two branches. The rational numbers are uh, repeat, repeating decimals, fractions, and square roots. 
irrational numbers are non-repeating. decimals, fractions, and square roots. So the irrational, as the name would suggest, don't make a whole lot of sense. These are crazy guys that are uh, that have no pattern to the re repetition. They're just kind of random. Um, an example of an irrational number would be uh, the pi in, in the, the symbol pi that's used for um, circumference of a circle. Uh, okay, so the rational numbers now do make sense. They're rational. They, are, they either work out evenly to whole numbers or they have a repeating pattern for the, for the repetition. So it's, it's something that just, uh, you know, has a, a pattern that you could count on. And then those are connected then into all, they hold all of what we've just done from the bottom of the chart up into the next category. And these cups then are part of the real numbers that they actually exist. So in math, you could work with these. And the imaginary number, which uh, uh, as I alluded to before, the the uh, mathematicians ran into a glitch with negative square roots, if you have like the negative 25, this, the, the rule for dealing with this didn't quite work out the way uh, it followed other rules for positive and negative uh, integers. So they had to come up with a, uh, a number and give it a value. They call it I, the cursive I.